last time we talked about Git from a high level and talked about what it was, who made it, where it was from. We even talked about why you might want to use it in your workflow. Today, we're actually going to look at how to use it, and we'll look at just some basic commands that should make you really effective uh, getting started in Git. So before we get started, you're going to want to make sure that Git is installed on your local computer. So if it is not, make sure you have that installed. Uh, there's a little video in the description below. I'll make sure to put a highlight somewhere on the screen to link you to that. But that will show you how to get Git installed and configured on your machine. So in the previous video, I mentioned how we have different cloud solutions to use Git. Um, two of the big ones, I would say, are GitHub and Bitbucket. GitHub is probably the more popular one, especially for open source. While Bitbucket is really favorable for private uh, repositories, it's unlimited private repositories and they're free. Whereas you would have to pay for that with GitHub and it's seven bucks a month. But public uh, repositories are free on both. So if we log into our Bitbucket account and go to repositories down here, uh, we'll see we have none if you've made a new account and you can go ahead and get started, create a repository here. And you see a few options here, you give it a name, uh, select if you want it public or private. And then it has a repository type, just select Git. The other one, Mercurial, that's really hard for me to say. Uh, I'd never use it and I don't really know much about it. I know it's another distributed uh, version control system. And so if, if you know anything about it, please share information in the comments. So once we have a new repository, we can see that there's nothing in it. It has a little folder, put some bits in your bucket. Uh, you can go to all your repositories and you can now see we have Hello World. That's what we just created. So we'll go back into that. And when you have a new repository, you can even create a readme file straight from the UI here. And a readme file is written down in the Markdown uh, file extension. And it's just the way that text files are rendered in all these kind of control systems like Bitbucket and GitHub. Um, you can see here it talks about what the readme is really for. But it's really good to have it for when other people come to the repository with just from information like how do I get set up? You know, what's this project for? Why'd you do it? So it could be anything. But um, the Markdown file extension, you will want to get comfortable with that because it you can see it's all written in like hashes to generate titles and it's very specific on spacing uh to make a new line and it's it can be kind of confusing at first but you get the hang of it so now we'll actually get into git and actually talk about how we set up a project in our uh, local workstation all these demos going forward will be using the command line i particularly like the command line because it's very straightforward and you know what you're typing and you, you can learn git a bit better but there are tons and tons of uh, different uis you can uh, use uh, gui interfaces to use it. And, um, if you didn't like the command line and we'll definitely go over those but for this video we'll just use the command line and that way we can just talk through the various steps um, involved with a git workflow so i've got my directory open go back to bitbucket and so it has this little link up here. And so you're going to copy that. And just a quick note, you'll notice when you can copy the uh, clone URL that you can either go through HTTPS or SSH. And so HTTPS is very basic and um, it will prompt you for a password on private repositories. SSH, you can bypass your password by generating the uh, public and private key pairs and then tossing one of them into uh, Bitbucket here in your account. Uh, we'll just go through HTTPS today to keep it basic. But just to answer the question of why you might want to use an SSH key um, in private key pair is if you were pulling from a repository with like a build script or something or an NPM script, maybe you have Jenkins um, pulling from private repositories and building, that's when you would want to kind of configure those actions because it would kind of stop the NPM script if it had to enter a password or something like that. So that's typically how I use it for, but it's just nice not to enter a password as well. All right. So once you're in the directory, you're going to say git clone. And then you're going to paste that URL and you're going to hit enter. And so now it's prompting me for my password. And it's done. So if I list my file structure, I can see now I have this hello world directory. And I can go in here. And then I even have the readme. So let me open that. And so here's our readme. So I've got this plugin that renders the README in a browser. And so README, when you look at it, it's just kind of this um, text file with this different spacing and these different marks. And it renders uh, appropriately based on whichever markdown um, it's going through. So before we start hitting the keyboard and pushing code around, I wanted to walk through the various steps of making a commit and syncing it with your remote repository. So when making a commit, 
and working in Git, there's basically three steps you need to always remember. So number one, any after we've made a change to a file, we do um, what's called adding it to staging. So we add it to staging, and we'll go over what staging is in a little bit. The second would be to commit it locally. And this is kind of like saving it to your local repository. Remember with Git, we have our own local repository and then there is a remote, some kind of um, single point of truth where the code is pulled from to deploy to production and whatever, you, but we have our own copy. So we're gonna save it locally to our own copy. And then we have to get our local changes synced up with the changes in Bitbucket. So then we do what's called a push. So it's pretty simple, add it to staging, save it and then push it up. Um, this idea of staging, again, is always kind of confusing and it's hard to explain to people, but basically you can kind of think of it as a queue. You basically queue up your files that you changed. Maybe you changed 10 files, but you only really want to add one for whatever reason. You can just add that one. You can add all your changes, but it basically queues it up. So when you say commit, Git is like, okay, well, I'm going to save all these files that are in the queue. So that's basically how you can think about it. So if I was to draw this out, Let's just say this is our working directory, the WD, and this is just the file system that we're working in. And we make a command. We made uh, changes to four files. We want to add all those four files to staging. So this is our staging area. And you don't see the staging area in the sense of another directory or a file or anything like that. Um, you can write a command and then Git will show you like, okay, these are the ones in queue. So you can see it but it's nothing it's nothing like a directory in your workflow we'll see this when we go um, back into our ide so it adds it to staging and then we say okay i've got these four files that i have changed and these are the ones i want to save and so then we do a commit here and that saves it to our local repository and now often um, people will do this and they're like hey i made my changes they're they're in the, the bit bucket they're in github and then someone else goes to it and is like, oh, uh, no, I don't see your changes. So what often happens is they're like, okay, I staged, I commit. But they always forget that they have their own copy, and there's a copy up in Bitbucket or GitHub. So the last final step is you push it up into your um, cloud service of GitHub, it, GitHub or Bitbucket. But in this case, ours is Bitbucket. So you just always remember, add staging, save it, commit it, and then push to Bitbucket. And if you need to put a picture in your head like this to remember, then do it. Um, you can even make a story out of it if you want to. Uh, if it helps you remember. So if I made a story of this one, I would say something like, we're blasting astronauts off to the moon, right? So if to do that, you have your astronauts here. You know, and they got they all got to get into the rocket ship. And we'll call this our staging area. This is a rocket ship. Do not laugh at my rocket ship. It's all the fire. So you got to add them into their rocket right you got two astronauts add them so stage them whatever you gotta do and then you need to lock the hatch that's a lock so commit it and then you gotta send them to the moon so then push it up and go to that beautiful moon so it's a pretty silly story but it might help you remember uh, now that I explained the silly story to you so if a silly story helps you remember then by all means put some kind of story to your head uh, but just do whatever works best for you all right guys so while we go through this, I'm actually going to write down a couple of these commands I'm using. Now, again, when we get to going through the GUI interfaces, you might find that you like the applications better to use, and it might make this a whole lot simpler. But for now, I'm just going to make sure I'm writing these processes down on the uh, hello.txt file here. So I already said um, it was git status I did. And you know what? Let's change this into a markdown. Git tips .md. And that's all I got to do is just change the extension to markdown. And it, see, there you go. And you can see based on my spacing, it's rendering a little bit differently. So it's spacing is important and you get the hang of it eventually, but it's kind of annoying to begin with. Get status like so space space enter will give us a new line space again. Oh, space again, enter. And now we can get, have an indention and we'll just say checks the status of your repo. Oh, Bo. And it answers things like what's been added? How many files? 
changed. And so we can see untracked files. It's saying hello text. So it's showing us the one text. And now even after I renamed it, we'll have something different. So if I say get status, get tips.md. So again, it's showing red because we had, we have not added that to staging. Again, we haven't put our astronauts into the rocket ship. So let's go ahead and do that. So you'll do that by saying git add and then I want to add all files. So I'll say dash a capital A. And so let me write this one down too. Adds all files. So this adds all changes you've done to the working directory, all files, all new files, and then even files you deleted. You're going to add all those changes to the staging area. So if I also did any, a change over here, just remove that and if I say get status, nope, if I didn't save it. So that's actually good that I didn't save it because you got to see um, when I did a get status, this now turned green. And so that says, hey, I know about this file. This, this file is locked. I mean, this file is loaded into the rocket ship. This astronaut's sitting in his chair, right? And so if I did it now, we'll have something in red. So what is this telling us? Okay, so it's saying, well, I know about the git tips, but then, okay, there's something changed down here. Uh, you modified the readme and you modified git tips again. And so I can even say, okay, what were those changes with a command called git diff? Get me the difference. So if I read this, all the green, how many files changed, get add. So you can see my new command I did there, what's been added. And again, some of the uh, GUI interfaces will render that really nice. And you'll even see that in Bitbucket, it renders all this stuff really nice for you. So you typically can check your changes out in there. So I even don't even know where, where we are. So I probably run get status all day, every day, probably a billion times a day, just to see where I am. And I click okay. Now you can add changes in a couple different ways. Uh, another command would be git add uh, period. And this basically adds files in the same way. It adds all new files, all new changes to existing files. But if you deleted a file, it wouldn't track that. So there's different flags. And I just kind of want to show you there's, there are different options out there. There's so many different options, but these two you could use uh, interchangeably um, as long as you weren't tracking a deleted file. So git status. They're all green, all right? So now let's uh, let's close the ship. Let's uh, commit them. Let's save them to our local repo, however you want to think about it. So you'll say git commit. And it'll throw you into this kind of uh, text editor thing. And it wants you to make a message. So with every commit you make, it forces you to put a message to it. So what did you do? So this kind of creates a history and a log. And you can do a lot of cool things with this, even make... Um, you know, change logs from it. I really like doing that. We'll discuss that later on. So we'll go into the insert mode with I, and then we'll describe what our change had. And it said, adds a git tips file to remember commands. So that's exactly what we do, right? So then I'll escape it. I'll right quit. And so we're back in here. So if I do a git status now, and we can even have a little message here, right? Two files changed get status and now let's just make sure it's clear get status nothing's green nothing's red we see nothing and it says your branch is ahead of origin master by one commit so it's basically telling us like hey your repository is ahead of what we have in remote so you need to push your local commits to make sure that they're there so if we went to bitbucket here right went to source It's only got this uh, readme file, right? So we'll say git push origin master. That's how we say master the branch. So when you push, you'll de designate which branch you want to push to, right? So we'll say git push origin master and origin just what you preface it with to say the branch master. And so if we refresh to this, we should now have a new file here. So now we have git tips.md and because it's a markdown, it will render 
um, in the browser. And this is a good example of different flavored markdowns. So if you looked at my markdown here, if I looked in the browser, it's rendering nice and the, it's all indented. If I even went through um, my IDE here, I think it even lets me preview it, open preview. And so it's even rendering fine, but in Bitbucket, it's all just on one level. So cool, we've added files and we made changes and we pushed them back up. So now if we had another developer working out you know, across the country, across the world, he has those changes and he can get them down. So let's demo that real quick. So again, in Bitbucket, you can actually edit on the file and it's very basic. You know, it's not really meant to code in the browser. It's meant for quick changes like this, make, make a quick change to a markdown or maybe some kind of configuration file. Um, but you typically would always want to make your changes in your IDE, commit them locally, and then push them to the master. But this is what I'm doing to force us to pull down some new changes. So we'll commit that. And it has this default message here. And I'll just say, adds forgotten command. And you can even see it says create a pull request for this change. I had mentioned pull requests in the first video. Um, we'll go into that a bit more later, but right for right now, I'm just going to commit it to the master branch. And so now we can see we added it there. So now that my changes are in Bitbucket, I want to get them now on my computer here. So let's say someone else on the other side of the world made some changes and now I want to get those. So what I would do is just say, get pull. It's that easy. And we can see some uh, more messages change, but if you look real close, you can see get tips and three lines of code were added. That's what this three plus 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 is. Oh, so there we go. There's our new change right there, git add. So to recap what we've done so far, we've gone ahead and created a repository in Bitbucket. We cloned it down to our computer. We made some changes to the files. We pushed them back up into master. And now we've simulated bringing changes back down from another developer or something. But this has all been on the master branch. Normally, you'd probably make your own branch, your own version uh, to work on changes, submit that, and then make a pull request out of that or a PR. Um, but, you know, that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. I think today, I think that covers a good basic intro. And I think we'll end it there. All right, guys, so make sure you follow the channel for any more videos like this on web and mobile development, as well as Git. We'll definitely be covering more advanced tutorials in the future. I'll see you next time. Thank you.